Good morning. Welcome to our Holy Cross parishioners and a special welcome to all who are visiting. Happy Father's Day to all our dads, grandfathers, godfathers, and those who love us as a father. We are pleased to have you join in our Eucharistic celebration today as we celebrate God's presence in our lives on this 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings today begin on page 1140 in the Red Worship Book. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Gagné. Please join in the entrance hymn, number 720, The Kingdom of God. Good morning. We begin our celebration of the Holy Eucharist in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our need for God's mercy. You came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. You came to heal the contrite, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We join in our great hymn of praise.
Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and by our deeds. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We invite our children up who are going to the children's liturgy. I don't think. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring, ho bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, <clears throat> to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to
Our second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower, all who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, this is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day and through it all, the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples. He explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight, yet we are courageous. It's been a few weekends since I have preached because all of us priests have had to help elsewhere in the past few weeks, in my case at Aquinas. Father George is on his way to Webster right now. Our ability to help anyone will now be greatly curtailed after next week. In my previous parish, I had three churches spread out over nine miles and six masses. After just a year, I lost my help from St. Mary's in Canandaigua and had to reduce my parish to four masses in three churches. It seems to many people that the vocation issue is always a problem for someone else out there and never for us. 
that is until it hits home. In the time of Jesus, the farmer would sow seeds in the earth and then wait. He would use a scythe to reap the crop when it is ready. Then he and his neighbors with him would gather it from the harvest. Next comes the threshing, separating the husks and the straw from the grain, followed by winnowing, which detaches the heavier grain from the lighter chaff. Neighbors would help one another in this work. And this method is still done by the Amish who don't use machinery. But normally this work is done today by huge machines that are guided down the rows of grains by satellites in space using GPS. The neighbors aren't even involved. But the image Jesus creates for us still applies. The seeds of love are planted in human souls and grow up unobtrusively, easy to miss as each person goes through life. The older method promoted community as among farmers they would help one another. The invention in America of the combine made it possible for each farmer to reap, thresh, and winnow all alone. And yet despite all of their efficiency, these machine-driven harvesting makes it possible to forget the mystery of growth and human effort, as well as community. Jesus was more interested in persons of the yield. He wasn't interested in the efficiency of gathering harvest. The first parable in the gospel today shows us that. The farmer scatters seed on the land and he waits his ordinary life continues. He would sleep and rise each and every day, and through it all, the seed sprouts and grows. He doesn't know how. The land yields the fruit, the blade, the ear, and then the full grain. Jesus gives quiet admiration to this simple fact of life. Seeds begin as tiny morsels and become, by the time the farmer can discern, sprouts. And then they burge into a whole field of crops, finally ready for harvest. The farmer has waited modestly for this mysterious process to take place. And Jesus compared this everyday miracle to the kingdom of God. The Catholic Encyclopedia says that the kingdom of God is a tone of mind that stands for an influence which must permeate our minds if we are to be one with Jesus and attain to his ideals. When Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he said in reply, the coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and no one will announce, look, here it is, or look, there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. The seeds of love are planted in human souls and grow up unobtrusively, easy to miss as each person sleeps and wakes and sleeps again. In the second parable, the humility of the seed is apparent. Jesus said the mustard seed is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. But the tiny mustard seed, the size of a pinhead, unassumingly grows into a great shrub or tree. The white mustard species grew to 10 or 12 feet with a stem the size of a person's arm. It was well known in the land of Israel. How does this apply to the kingdom of God? Well, we are small. The movements of the spirit in us are so modest as to be nearly disregarded. Yet if we are patient, if we watch for growth within us, the spirit gradually will surge up and will give us the yield of much spiritual fruit. It is the miracle of growth in plants and trees, but even more in the goodness and grace that is God's kingdom within us. As we see both in nature and in scripture, and as we know from experience, God is overly generous, lavish, extravagant, and patient. If nature and scripture 
are to be believed. God is the op absolute opposite of everything that is stingy, frugal, or sparing in what it does. God, in other words, is prodigal. The parable of the prodigal son could easily have been called the prodigal father, who is lavish and generous in his giving. We see this also in the parable of the sower. The sower goes out to sow. He, he scatters seed generously, wastefully on the road, among the rocks and the thorns, in bad and rich soil. No farmer would ever do this. Who would waste seed on soil that can never produce a harvest? God, it seems, doesn't ask that question, but simply keeps scattering his seed everywhere, not calculating whether it is a good investment or not. God has infinite seeds to scatter. God is generous beyond all our in imagination. And how do we imitate that generosity of God as we strive to bring about God's kingdom in our families, our community, our parish. For as Paul says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet, we are courageous. May God bless you. We join in professing our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join now in our prayer of the faithful, asking God to hear these our intentions. For the church, that we may learn more and more each day how to love one another as Jesus has loved us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that God will touch hearts and give leaders courage to work, to end violence, and promote the dignity of each person. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are graduating, that they may go forth into their future, secure in the faith and knowledge in which they have grown. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our homeschool families, especially our youth who are moving up to the next grade, that the Holy Spirit will keep them safe through these summer months. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we remain accountable for the gifts we have been given and to share them generously. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and suffering receive seeds of hope from the healing hands of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of those who have died may know the peace of Christ in God's kingdom, especially Ryan Nagel, Micheline Palumbo, 
Sarah Sternick, Russell McCormick, and for your Father's Day intentions for which this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have heard the prayers of your people who come before you with grateful hearts this day. Answer these, our prayers, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The second collection today is for the Holy Cross School monthly collection. Please join in the offertory hymn number 858, Come You Thankful People, Come. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, 
who will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you come to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, as in one chorus of exultant praise we acclaim in song. <laughs> third Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Salvatore our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children of the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and fathers, all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admission to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us share with one another a sign of that peace.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
there's anyone taking communion to the sick of our parish, please come forward at this time. Next weekend, after all the Masses, we will be having a reception at our parish center to say goodbye and God bless to Father George. Please stop by and wish him well. We ask that you please support our non-event fundraiser by returning your envelope as soon as possible. Our fiscal year ends June 30th and your support is greatly needed and appreciated. Senior and friends will have their year-end gathering on Thursday, June 21st at 1.30 p.m. in our parish center lunch will be provided. Registration for Future Now Leadership Training is happening. This is a great two-day program for youths in grades 9 through 12. Raffle tickets for our second annual Father Wheeland 5K Race and Raffle Fundraiser are available in the parish office. Tickets are $5. Please see the bulletin or website for full details on all events happening in our parish community there will be no coffee hour after Mass today. Please join in the recessional hymn, number 674, We Walk by Faith. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask God's blessing especially on those who celebrate Father's Day today. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you have made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and their love shine forth. Grant that their sons and daughters may always honor them with a spirit of profound respect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Have a great day.